well, we've been seeing, obviously, we've been seeing uh, an escalation, you might say, of, uh, of the words uh, among the members of the Philippine team in the past few days. We had uh, uh, Justice Hardalesa here on, in this program a couple of days ago. And then yesterday, you had a column again with the Philippine Daily Inquirer about Itu Aba. Um, so, mukhang, uh, mukhang lalo pang umiinit. I'm just wondering, lang, of course, we want to go into the issues, but I'm also wondering at the same time, uh, all these arguments being made out in the open, could, could they have any effect on any future moves that uh, the government or the Philippines will be making uh, in staking its claim on the West Philippine Sea? Baka naman makaapekto to? No, it will not affect. But uh, if we look at uh, the uh, deficiencies, uh, the uh, missteps that we've uh, made, uh, we can improve next time. Mm -hmm. Improve on what? What do you mean? If uh, we go to arbitration next time, we will do it oh. much better. Could you, oh, could you, you mean, drill down okay. on that, sir? Do it much better? Yes. It, well, you did make some major points in, in, uh, in your columns. Uh, let's be a bit more specific this time. What improvements are you looking at or looking for? Well, uh, the team must be on the same page. Uh, of course, there will be dissents, but once uh, the president makes a decision, everybody should toe the line. And in this case, the president made a decision that uh, the 15 paragraphs on Ito Aba should be retained, which means that we are presenting, we presented to the tribunal 15 paragraphs all on Ito Aba. And we expected, we should have expected the tribunal to ask our lawyers questions on those 15 paragraphs. But uh, the Solicitor General instructed our lawyers not to answer anything on Ituaba. So that goes against the instruction of the president. When the president said, include those 15 paragraphs in the memorial, it carries with it the instruction, answer also questions on those 15 paragraphs if there are questions from the tribunal. So when the Solicitor General said, do not answer questions, he was in effect countermanding the order of the president. And this should not happen again because we nearly lost because of those things. Thank you. On the other hand, he was saying that actually, actually, sir, sobrang diametrically opposed yung position yun, no? because uh, you're saying that it would have been legal suicide to not include ito aba. No? On the other hand, uh, Sol Jen Levi is of the other opinion, no? uh, in fact, the almost opposite well, opinion, that we should not touch that, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, that issue at all. Well, they, all our foreign lawyers were unanimous to a man that we should answer. We should include Ito Aba in the discussion in our memorial and we should answer all the questions on Ito Aba. Because Ito Aba was the large, is our largest island in the Spratlys. Uh -huh. And uh, if Ito Aba generates an EEZ, uh -huh. then there will be an overlap with the EEZ of Palawan, of Palawan because the distance between the two is just a little bit over 200 nautical miles. Once there is an overlap, the tribunal would have no jurisdiction. So, patay na kaagad yung case. Yes. But, but it's what if it's issue. just a rock? What if it's just a rock? If, Which if it's is just what, a rock, uh, it's so just, then, it will uh, be entitled only to 12 nautical miles. So, there is no overlap. Our position, the position of our lawyers, was that it's just a rock. But you have to discuss it because the tribunal is mandated to look into its geologic feature. That is the, okay. the, the task of the tribunal because the, the, uh, the rules of arbitration says if a party doesn't appear, then the tribunal must determine whether uh, the case of, for example, the Philippines is meritorious in fact and in law. Okay. They, they, they have to ask the questions that China would have asked had it been present. Uh -huh. And the ma number one question is whether Ito Aba is habitable to generate an EEZ. Uh -huh. And if it's right. habitable, then the case will be dismissed because uh, yes. in 2006, China made a reservation in case of overlapping EEZ, uh -huh. it will not be subject to compulsory arbitration. So it was very critical. And you can see that from the uh, narration of uh, Paul Reichler. So yeah. we had to answer. If you do not answer, the tribunal will say, will say, well, you don't want us to 
ask those questions, but that's our duty. So you are not allowing us to perform our duty. We'll just dismiss the case. That's what they will do. Okay, yeah. did they in fact ask the question? I, I just yes, wondered. they asked. In fact, they sent email the question before the last hearing. These are the questions on ito about kindly answer. And the uh, Solicitor General Hilby emailed our lawyers, do not answer those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Justice, uh, we talked to Justice Tardelesa earlier this week, and he said he, I think he was also, he also took offense that you depicted former President Noinoy Aquino Dawa in a less than favorable light, and he can no longer answer the call And We just want you, we just want your comment on that. Now, it, well, it looked like, like Noinoy Dao didn't have control over the Philippine team, didn't know what was going on. Well, I said that uh, the arbitration is the most enduring legacy of President Aquino. Yes. It took courage and wisdom to file the case. But his team were divide, uh, was divided and it, was dif it made it difficult for him because there were two factions and it, that made it difficult for him to make the decisions. But he made the right decisions. And that's why Actually, I said we owe yeah. an eternal debt of gratitude. But Actually, that was what they objected to fiercely. You have to no? state the facts. You, you cannot make a press release. You have to state the facts. We credit him for those brave uh, acts of filing the case. But it was, not a, it was not a walk in the park. It wasn't a bed of roses. It was a struggle every step of the way. And you have to but, tell it the way it happened. You know, you know what Paul Reichler said about that? Because uh, uh, because Hillby was saying that on the sly, our foreign lawyers wanted to inject joint development. Mm -hmm. And Reichler said that's a complete fabrication. Why? Well, Marites Vito made a, a, a check. The word, the term joint development never appeared in the 300-page memorial of the Philippines. It never appeared in any of the oral arguments. It never appeared in any of the written questions of the judges. It never appeared in the written answers of our lawyers. And I checked just last week the transcript of the oral arguments in the last three days. That was November, the entire November hearing. Not a word, not a word about joint development. The judges never asked any question on joint development. Our lawyers never mentioned it. Nobody mentioned joint development. You know why? Because China def de uh, defines joint development as this. You can go to their website in their Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and China says joint development means we own the resources, but we allow other countries to jointly develop with us. The premise of China's joint development is they own the resources. So we can never agree on joint development under that premise. And I said, we cannot talk about joint development because precisely we went to the tribunal to ask the tribunal to rule who owns the gas. And the moment you talk of joint development, you agree that there is uh, overlapping exclusive yes. economic zone. Yes. That's why you joint to develop. And the moment there is overlapping exclusive economic zone, the case is dismissed. You accept, you admit that there is no jurisdiction by the tribunal. So very dangerous to, to agree on joint development. That's why our lawyers never mentioned joint development because it's a trap. Mm -hmm. You will be admitting that China also has uh, sovereign rights. That's why you're jointly developing. But the moment you admit that, then there is an overlapping EZ, the tribunal has no jurisdiction. It will have to dismiss the case. When do we talk of joint development? Never. Because joint development, according to China, means they own the resources. That's why I'm using the term cooperation agreement. If you look at the memorandum of understanding and the terms of reference that we signed in 2018 and 2019 with China, it's all about the two countries cooperating to exploit gas in accordance with the service contract system of the Philippine government. 
Why service contract system of the Philippine government? Because under our service contract, if you look at the first whereas clause of our service contract, it says that whereas the oil and gas belong to the Philippine government. Another provision, this contract shall be governed by Philippine law. So those two pillars would mean that China is accepting the arbitral award. That would, that's the implication. That's why when I was presented the MOU and TR, I said, we have to structure it in such a way it will be under our service contract system. And that's the way it happened. And I was so happy that China signed, but there was supposed to be a third agreement, the commercial agreement between Forum Energy and uh, Sinook, China National Offshore Company. But at that point, China said, let's remove this, this clause that Philippines will govern. <laughs> so that, that's a deal breaker. I, we all said that cannot be done. I mean, uh, we cannot allow that because that, that will mean we, we're giving up half of our sovereign rights there. Mm. So that is why we don't use the term joint development. We use, I use cooperation agreement because joint development has a special meaning uh, under, uh, and with the Chinese. It means they own the resources and you are invited to jointly develop. Mm -hmm. And yes, remember, nobody talk about joint development during the arbitral proceedings.